welcome, welcome, welcome. You are listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. I'm Spitface. I'm here with the always classy and sometimes sassy host of this show, the first lady of sports talk, the one, the one and only Cheryl Smith. How you doing this morning? Hey, I'm doing real well, Spitface. I'm doing excellent this morning. Um, you know, it's almost time for vacation time, so I'm uh oh uh oh uh oh uh uh first lady's mind is you know, I don't blame her. You know, about a you know, when you getting close to that vacation, you know, no matter what going on, is it you already there. You know? <laughs> You know, your body may, may not, not be there, but you there. So it's like, yeah, right, okay, yeah, uh, cool, because I'm getting to my vacation. I hear you there. And, but First Lady was up working late last night. She was up, you know, work, uh, up, up late checking out that, uh, that, that Bucks, uh Suns game. So, you know, she was doing her due diligence. Now, check out the music this week on Shout Out. We are featuring performance from 18 Karat Reggae. Hmm. Will he find his shining star? Get the cold feel of the mute button. 18 carat. We'll find out. First lady, we're ready. What you say? Each week, we try to figure out what is going on in the sports world. Not the plays of the week, more like the players of the week. Are they trying to tell us something? So we ask, what you saying? Fly, little birdie, fly. Time keeps on slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. So I want to fly like an eagle to the sea, fly like an eagle, let the spirit carry me. I want to fly, fly right into the future. The little birdies known as the Phoenix Suns wish they could fly far, far away from losing at home to the Bucks. Is it time for Phoenix fans to hit the panic button? If Phoenix loses the series to the Bucks, will this be an all-time choke? If the Bucks win the championship, are we seeing a dynasty and a legend in the making? Marvelous Marvin Hagler, rest in peace, Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones Jr., and the Steve Miller Band are asking, what you saying? <laughs> well, you know, it was time for Phoenix fans to hit the panic button <laughs> when they should have won game four. I mean, I'm going back to game four when they were minutes away from winning the game and allowed the Bucks to steal game four. Yes, the fans definitely should hit the panic button. In fact, they are on life support right now. <laughs> it's beyond panic. It's beyond panic. We need to get the paddles for them, right? Oh, I mean, the, no. The Suns dominated the first quarter of game five, and the Bucks dominated the rest of the game, with the exception of the Suns' late run in the fourth quarter. I mean, they did try it. Matter of fact, they had a chance to go into the lead. And you know what's so sad for the Suns? For the last two games, Spitface, their best players had critical turnovers mm. in the fourth quarter with seconds remaining in the quarter, Mm-mm-mm. which really cost them the, to lose Game Uh-oh. four and game five. CP3 nerd, nerd. had that turnover in game four. And in game five, it was Devin Booker. I mean, he <laughs> had a terrible turnover. First of all, he dribbled into traffic, and that's the reason why Drew Holiday was able to steal the ball from him. Now, the problem for the Suns, the other players have not been dominant, and they really haven't helped Devin Booker. Devin Booker, I don't know what his total was, but I know he scored over 40 points, and that's for the past two games he scored over 40 points, and the team still have lost both of those games. I mean, the Bucks' big three were really, really dominant. I mean, you know, you had um, Drew Holiday had 27, Chris Middleton 29, and Giannis had 32, and I'm telling you, that was a quiet 32 for Giannis. I mean, let's face it. It was basically the Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton uh, show for that game five. But when you looked at the statistics, I mean, guys, you saw oh, Giannis had 32 points. My goodness. But um, the Suns, you know, like I said, Booker scored his points. But um, Chris Paul, you know, he had a respectable 20 points. He did much better than he had been in the past two games. And Aiden, he had a very, very quiet 20 points, I'm going to say that. He has definitely not been dominant. And what happened to um, 
what's his name, the Braves, uh, 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 Jay, Cu- Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder, I mean, he came alive with a couple three-pointers, but he really hasn't been playing well either. So the Suns really need to get their other, the, the Jags, you know, as what Charles Barkley always liked to say, just another guy. Those are the Jags. The Jags have not been doing it for the Suns. And uh, right now, it's hard for me to say this, but Coach um, Busenhauser, he's been, Busenholder has been um, out coaching Monty Williams. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. They've made, the Bucks have made very good, great adjustments. And, you know, it, it's definitely working. Now, if the series, uh, if the if the Suns lose this series, you know, Spence Face, I am not definitely calling it a, an all-time choke. It really wasn't an all-time choke. In fairness to Chris Paul, I'm definitely not going to say it was an all-time choke. I mean, we know CP3 has been involved with games and series where his team has choked. <laughs> Trust me, we, we can look at all those Clipper um, times that the Clippers lost series and they were up three to one. I mean that's a choke. I mean as as I said last week, the NBA playoff adage is a series doesn't begin until the home team loses. Well, the home team just lost, so this series just began, and it's time for the Suns to respond because you already know the Bucks can actually win everything on um, game six, so it'll definitely be interesting to see if they can pull up. But you know what, Smith says, I don't know about them Bucks. To me, they just don't have that killer instinct in them to 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 really put teams away. So it's a possibility the Suns could win game six. Now, if the Suns win game six, I hate to say it for the Bucks, they are going to lose this series, so they better put the Suns away for game six. Now, if the Bucks do win, I don't see a dynasty in the making because there is so much parity in this league. I just think it will be different teams going to the playoff. You know, we had just gone through the past 10 years of the finals that involved either LeBron James or Stephen Curry, and sometimes it was both of them at the same time. So it was refreshing to have different teams in the play in the finals. And I really think it's going to be hard for teams to win back-to-back championship now because it's, it's, it's just it's a different um, era now. And um, like I said, the 10 years, so I really, I really see where this league has so much parity and teams are really, um, you know, you, you're going to have different teams in the championship. Now, as far as uh, legend in the making, yeah, Giannis Antetokounmpo, if I can say that name right, he will be a legend. I mean, he really, if you look at his play, he really hasn't scratched the surface of his greatness. I mean, let's face it, Giannis, to me, is still has a lot of upside to his game, believe it or not. I mean, you talk about somebody who's been the MVP for two two times MVP, and he still has a lot to to do as far as his game. He still needs to learn to be a better outside shooter, be a better three-point shooter, and, of course, he needs to learn to make his free throws. I mean, can you imagine if he really gets a great outside shot and he can hit his free throws? I mean, he will be almost the next Will Chamberlain. He would be completely unstoppable because of the way he can drive in his left. I mean, and we already know how great he is on the defensive side because that block he did – on Aiden when it was the alley oop, I mean that was a fantastic block. Everybody talked about last year how um, Bam Arabino's uh, block of um, of um, uh, boy the, the the Boston Celtics um, when Tatum right when Tatum was coming to the basket and Bam blocked his shot. Everybody said that was the best shot in their life they've ever seen. No, Giannis Antetokounmpo's shot. Block shot against um, Aiden probably was the best block you've ever seen because he was guarding somebody else, and he came back and recuperated and blocked that shot. So it, it, it's, you know, he's, he's, he's definitely going to be a legend. Like I said, it's, it's not even to the point where, where what we can see in Giannis. So I truly believe he will be a legend when we're talking about the legend of, 
Wilt Chamberlain. You remember the NBA had to change change the game because of Wilt Chamberlain. I don't know what they're going to have to do with Giannis, but like I said, Giannis will definitely be unstoppable. All right, Spitface, what's your opinion? Uh, 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 uh. Cold blue, cold blue. <laughs> like you said, bring in the paddles. Phoenix needs some life quick, fast, and in a hurry. And um, And this series is not over. And I'm going Phoenix fans, uh, as fans, I know that y'all are pulling your hair out. You're going, what dumb mistake, not calling the time out, all that stuff. Okay, it it happened. But this is when, uh, you know, okay, hey, everything is on the line. Like First Lady says, hey, this is the real series. Now, so far, you can look and say, wow, the Bucks have won three in a row. Now, uh, I don't have it that the Bucks can, because uh, this would be like a delayed sweep if they won, if the Bucks win four in a row. Uh, the Suns have enough game, and their coach will probably get his head from in between his behind <laughs> and coach a good game. And, and CP3, no, this this is it, buddy. You know, uh, CP3, this is it. This is your shot to finally get that ring. And you, LeBron, KD, all the, y'all the old school. Steph, y'all ain't getting no more rings. Y'all are not getting no more rings. So this is it for your class. You the last man who can get that ring. Because the rest of your buddies, they are not getting no more rings. It, rings is out of discussion because it is a new day. It's a new dime. And these young boys uh, ha, uh, are moving y'all aside. And it, it's not that y'all, I mean, anybody would want to have y'all on, on, on their team. But let's face it. These boys are growing up right, by, uh, right in front of our eyes. Now, um, and it, it, it's hard to... Uh, what makes it seem like a choke is that Phoenix was up two games. They were up two games, and then they let themselves lose three in a row. So that's where, where the choke comes in. And uh, uh, to eliminate that, they got to win the next game. They got to make it seven games, win or lose, because they lose four in a row, choke, <laughs> big time choke. Now, uh, now, if the Bucks win the championships, are we seeing a dynasty and legend in the making? Uh, and I'll say this: if the Bucks don't win the championship, we still seeing a dynasty and a legend in the making. Uh, uh, the Bucks retooled their team for Giannis, and it paid off big time. They in the championship. And they coach, uh, everybody on their team is starting to just, like, wake up. And uh, looking at the, uh, you know, how the NBA has gone, uh, I, I had to disagree with First Lady a little bit. Uh, uh, it, it seems as though, yeah, we may not have uh, teams uh, doing three-peats, but uh, I don't think it's the era yet where it's going to be every year we'll, you know, we'll start seeing different different teams. Oh no, oh no, they're going to get at least a back to back. So that's what I'm saying, first lady. They're going to get at least a. If they don't win this ten, watch out because they're back next year and they're going to win a back to back. Oh well, I, to be honest, with you, no, I don't think they're going to win a back to back. I mean, because you got to look at it. Uh, the this year, even though it was a little bit better than last year because we were in the bubble last year, this year they was a quick turnaround. Even the next year, it's still going to be a quick turnaround for a lot of teams. But uh, you had a lot of teams that were injured too. So we got to say Kawhi was injured from the Clippers. Um, the Nets, he can you retire. know what happened with the Nets. So, so all of it, them can retire. <laughs> well, you said all the women retire. So anyway, so again, like I said, I think there's too much parity in this league that we're going to see all these back-to-back um, championships like we used to see in the past. So, but anyway, over to you, Spitface. 
Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, rocking my peers and putting suckers in bed, making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go. Boom. Explosion, overpowering, over the competition I'm towering. Wrecking shop when I drop these lyrics that'll make you call the cops. Don't you dare stare. You better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest that all get sliced and diced. Competition paying the price. I'm going to knock you out, huh? Mama say knock you out, huh? We're talking about the knockout punch to Pittsburgh quarterback Dwayne Haskins by his wife, uh, and I might get this wrong, Calabria, Calabria. She punched him in the in the mouth. See, I can't pronounce it. She didn't even hit me in the mouth. She punched him <laughs> in the mouth and knocked out a two. The Hawks crazy thing that happened at the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas where the couple were planning on renewing their vows after tying the, the, tying the knot in March. Split up a lip, missing tooth, and other mouth injuries. Instead of renewed vows, are we looking at divorce court or Judge Judy? By the way, what's up with Richard Sherman being charged with domestic violence? Leroy Satchel Page, Walter, Buck Lennon, and James Cool Papa Bell are asking what you're saying. You know, First Lady, uh, first off, whether it's a man or a woman, you do not put your hands on the other person. You know, that, you know I, it doesn't matter if it's a woman doing it or a man doing it. You, you just don't do that. Now, uh, that aside, uh, Talk about the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Whoa. <laughs> I'm going, uh, uh, now, there, there's no justification for the violence. But you, I, I, I'm like, Dwayne, what, what went on? Did you say the wrong thing? Was she in a bad mood that day? And you, you know, that, that she, and, and then I'm going, baby, did, did, did he know that? He needed to get you into the uh, mixed martial arts. Because <laughs> you got a hell of a punch, baby. You might as well make some cash off that bad boy. But I, I think that the, the part that just really got me was that they just got married. Just got married in March. Now, not that, not that couples don't, you know, go through something, you know, now that we're married and we kind of learn and, you know, our boundaries and, you know, and what together is really like. You know, it, it can be a, a little little patch here and there. But you're not even a good six months. Y'all plan, it sound like y'all, you know, like y'all lovey-dovey. You were new, you know, obviously the first ceremony must, must not have been the way y'all wanted it, so y'all want to do a renewal. But what happened? You know, and then, uh, like I say, Richard Sherman, domestic violence, there's some stuff going on. First lady, I don't know. I didn't catch up on my, on my TMZ, <laughs> but I'm just mystified. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, let's say this. Uh, domestic violence has its resurfaced again in the NFL this past week now. Dwayne Haskins' situation, to me, has been the subject of a lot of disrespect on the Internet. Mm. People have been making fun of Haskin because his wife hit him and allegedly locked his tooth out. Well, to me, it doesn't matter. Domestic violence is wrong, even if, a, even if it was a female as the perpetrator. It's wrong on all accounts. And, you know, that's the reason why a lot of men do not come forth about their issues with domestic violence is because of the fact that, yeah, people are going to look and side-eye them and make fun of them. But, you know, I have to give Haskin some credit now because he definitely would have received most of the flack if he had retaliated against his wife, mm. and he didn't do that. So, you know, he didn't retaliate against her. Because, you know, most men, if somebody knock your tooth out, allegedly knock your tooth out, you're going to punch him back, whether it's your wife or not. But, you know, you have to give him respect for being able to con- to compose himself. Now, you're right, Spitzface. What happened to them? You got, I mean, I want to tell you what happened to them because after the incident with his wife, an Instagram model, an Instagram model came out and put some text messages stating that Dwayne Haskin was trying to get 
was demanding the twenty thousand dollar worth of gift he had given to this Instagram model. She he was demanding that she return the gift. Now, first of all, Dwayne, I don't know what type of pet person you are. You are an Indian giver? Oh, I shouldn't even say that. I apologize. That's not kosher. You can't say that anyway. <laughs> that's disrespect. But that's what we used to say back in the day. I mean, you don't give money. You don't give your gifts back. Why would I give gifts back if somebody presented gifts to me? Why would I do that? So I don't think he was foolish to even think he had to, for her to do that. And she posted all those text messages on the on her Instagram. She had receipts. So it makes you mm. you makes you think if the wife had gotten privy to some of this information about this Instagram model that he was uh, seeing or 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 showering gifts. So it makes me wonder because something drastically happened in Las Vegas. Now we always say what goes on in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas, but unfortunately this incident did not stay in Las Vegas. Okay. We knew about it. And the thing is, you know, Haskin actually also went to Instagram telling people, don't believe the hype because he has all of his teeth. Yeah, he probably got all of his teeth because he already had the dental work done to it, but I don't know. But that's a problem, too, because to me, he's in denial of what happened. And when people are in denial about domestic uh, violence, that's why it's so prevalent because people – you know, diminishes what really happened, and it's a cycle and it persists. So, you know, he needs to come forth. I mean, it is a private matter. I understand that, but it became public when you get the police involved with the situation. Now, as far as Richard Sherman, I mean, that was very shocking, to be honest with you, Spitface, because, you know, he always seemed to be so well-grounded. And I'm only going by interviews, listening to him. You really, you really heard... Richard Sherman going, uh, saying things, you know, you know, acting kind of crazy. You know, you really never heard a situation like this. But his situation, you know, it is considered domestic violence because he was trying to break an entry into his in-law's house. But his situation is far more deeper than that because of the, apparently, allegedly, it was reported by his wife that he has been having mental illness issues. He was threatening to kill himself. He sent text Mm. messages to people saying that he was going to hang himself. So it's clearly that Richard Sherman needs more than just a situation Mm. with his his, um, uh, legal situation. He has serious mental issues. And you know, and he says mental illness. He did it. He did an apology, a public apology, um, and he said his mental illness is really real. I really pray that he he doesn't or isn't showing any signs of CTE. If anybody yeah. says that is chronic traumatic encephalopathy, yeah, that, that, that's the thing. That's the thing. This is what usually happens with um, former players or people who have uh, players that are having issues with CTE, they start exhibiting behavior that is so unlike them. And I really think this is unlike Richard Sherman. And so he needs um, the mental illness. So, and, and also you, he might be coming to grips that his career is over, too, because he's still a free agent on uh, Spitface. So, you know, it's hard for a lot of these players to also deal with the fact that their their career may be over. He hasn't been signed to a team yet. So that's running kind of late for him not to get picked up by a team. And this situation is not going to help it. So, you know, I hope he gets the help that he needs because uh, he's a good person from, you know, just from seeing him from afar and just reading on, on some of his um, things that he's into. I mean, he's a, Sam, he's a Stanford grad, and he's one of the most intelligent players in the NFL um, league, and it's sad for this to happen to him. So you know Something is definitely wrong. Mm-mm-mm. All right. Hey, watch this space. The more will be revealed. First Lady, please take us to break. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we have a performance from 18 Carat Reggae on Shout Out Part 1. The 
music flows in from around the globe to get a shout out from the panel. First lady, I can't wait to hear the music from 18 Karat Reggae. On Shout Out, we feature new independent artists who are looking to find their shining star. If we like what we hear, we'll give the track a shout out. If we don't like it, we hit the mute. Today we are featuring music from 18 Karat Reggae from Wesley Chapel. He says, Quote, 18 Karat Reggae brings the latest and greatest dance hall and reggae music straight from the birthplace of the genre, Kingston, Jamaica. If you are a true reggae fan, you will not like the 18, oh, you will not like the 18 Karat Reggae, no, oh, okay, if you, <laughs> uh, let me get this right, you will not like the 18 Karat Reggae compilation. You will love them. All right. He said you're going to love them, not like them. You're going to love them. All right. All right, DJ, let's hear, I think it's called Menz- Menziza. Menziza. Go down la maniza. Baby, see, man, I love you. Uh. Hey, I me love you. Come on and let me touch you. Touch you. Find you my location, take a mini vacation. I need you here to act on my imagination. Me wanna feel your body in a real life as can. Take to my screen like you risk, but no, if you feel like a star, I'll make it last. But if you know how it feel like, baby, watch this. My all I practice, anticipate to bend over till if it's like this. Online thing, I did to my wish list. Until we meet, me I go back there. She said she wanna, she wanna, she wanna. Go down a maniza. If you not love me, you no. Know. Sweet like a vanilla. Mm-hmm. That's what she wanna do. Go down a maniza. If you not love me, you know. Give me love it. Sweet like a vanilla. change from my meet you. She wanna, she wanna, go down a maniza. Give you that love, you know. Sweet like a vanilla. Vanilla, that's what she wanna do. Wanna do. Go down a maniza. Go down a maniza. Give you that love, you know. Give you that love, sweet like a vanilla. Does it text keep me interested? Things that say I like, but now go forget. Think big, I too. Keep my wet voice notes on repeat like an orchestra. Baby, watch this, my all I practice Anticipate to bend over till if it's like this All the line thing I did to my wish list So until we meet, we are gonna have this Baby, say me, say me Wanna me, wanna be Your only boo will be Wanna go up on my knees, ah Wanna go up on my knees, ah Wanna go up on my knees, ah Wanna go up on my knees, Go down a maniza Give me that love you know Sweet like a vanilla That's what she wanna do Go down a maniza Give me that love you know Sweet like a Go down, go down Reggae. 
Um, I'm going to shout it out. You know, um, you know, reggae music, you can't go wrong. I've rarely heard mm-hmm. bad reggae music, to be honest with you. They, they understand their genre, and they stay within their lane of reggae music. If they, 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 it's, it's dance hall. Um, um, and um, actually that was a little bit slower to me than what normally dance hall music is. But um, I, you know, I think that was they call it rock steady. I think that's the type of music it was. But it was um, definitely um, uh, it was nice. I, I, I enjoyed it. So I'm going to shout it out, Spitface. Uh, I'm shouting it out. I thought he was in the group. Now, um, uh, you know what? Uh, the uh, it made me kind of want to be in a reggae place. You know, I, I, I can stand. I can stand some Jake chicken and some good goodies. You know, so uh, it uh, it made me feel at home. So I like it. Okay, okay. So uh, you know, so we got two. We, we've been on a roll with the music for the last couple of weeks. So let's continue on. Hopefully, they'll on <laughs> shout out part two. We'll have another performance from eighteen karat reggae. So hopefully they can continue our success with music. Is that the sound of my favorite underwater friend? Is it time for Flip It? All right, all right, uh, Flipper is all happy today. It's a good day in Florida. Flipper is all, it, it must be bright and sunny today. No no, no hurricanes. Uh, Flipper, you know, Flipper got a, a, a letter, First Lady, and they wanted to ask that when, you know, uh, when Flipper applies for his driver's license, uh, you know, they ask what race you are. Does, does Flipper have to put down other? <laughs> And uh, you know, you know, so me and Flipper was looking at it, and first off, I was going, uh, I don't think that they give drivers licenses <laughs> to to underwater peoples. <laughs> now, now maybe there's, you know, maybe that, you know, it's a form of discrimination. But when I see him driving down the street, I ain't got no problem with it. But okay, all right, Flipper, and Flipper is never a other. Okay, just want to put that straight. Don't have Flipper come throw, throw a tuna at you. Now, time for Flipper while host the Finn appointed in Flip the script and defend the opposing view. If Aaron Rodgers does not return to the Packers, are the Bears the hands-down favorites to win the division? All right, defend. No Aaron Rodgers means Green Bay ain't a threat. Bears glide to the division title. Now, uh, you know, the Bears are a weird team. They might get sold. You know, they're they talking about actually the Hallises might just sell the Bears. So there's a lot in the air. The, the coach, the GM, you know, they start, I, I put it like this. It, it's not a matter of them, get, you know, starting the season and, and, and ending up on the hot seat. The, the season ain't started uh, uh, uh Preseason ain't started, you know. Camp ain't started. Them boys, is at the heat is on ropes. They got to do something this year. They got to. And uh, uh, if any, and they have no Aaron Rodgers to contend with. You know, Green Bay is is, is a good team, but with Aaron Rodgers, they go from being a good team to uh, contenders for the NFC Championship. You know, every year. That's just how that worked out. You know, after all that's said and done, Green Bay be in the mix with Aaron Rodgers. Now, they they got some work they needed to do, but Aaron Rodgers was making up for that, like getting some top receivers, all that kind of stuff. But uh, uh, this, uh, 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 you know, Detroit, 
Okay, well, enough about Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> now, Minnesota, it, it, it's sort of like, you know, they always kind of lurking, hanging around. They might, the quarterback, you know. And, and, and if anything, uh, you know, and, and they have leapfrogged and done some things, but, you know, basically just hang that mediocre on them. You know that 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 they they you know they they are titillating team, but the bears the bears don't tell they either win or they look bad. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> they 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 know no difference. They either win or they just go go all the way south. So uh, given that what's on the line, which is the gym's job, the coach's job, and uh, maybe the future of the franchise, as in selling it. Uh, no Aaron Rodgers, that, that's just what the Bears need to glide to the division title. First lady, defend. Well, with the fact that Green Bay is not going to have Aaron Rodgers, I mean, that means all of the teams are going to have a good chance of uh, getting the division title. I mean, even the Chicago Bears. But now, you know, with the Bears, Every year, they always have this unpredictable season. Every year. We don't expect to know too much in 2021 because nobody knows how the Bears are going to be. Uh, it's, it's really hard to predict because they can be uh, 11 and, uh, is what, 7? They can be 11 and um, 6, or they can be 6 and uh, 11. <laughs> they can win 11 games, or they can lose. 11 games. So we don't know. It it always seems to come down to, you know, how healthy they stay and whether they can catch lucky breaks. And, um, you know, the quarterback situation, we already know how that's going to be. So, uh, but the thing is, the key is, again, there's no Aaron Rodgers for the Green Bay Packers. So there's light at the end of the tunnel for the Bears. The Bears are definitely, they have just as great of a chance than anybody else does, to be honest with you. Uh, the division, you know, the the, the um, Vikings, they for some reason, even when Andrew, Aaron Rodgers are with the Green Bay, they still couldn't get it done um, as far as um, last year. And um, so, you know, Nagy, you know, I think Nagy realizes this is it. They need to do something and the um, the general manager, he needs to do something, too, because, you know, he, he did a bold move. You know, he, again, went up in the draft to get a quarterback. And, but this time, we're talking about Justin Fields. So I think Justin Fields will be the Chicago Bears' savior, and he's going to probably uh, replace uh, Andy Dalton at some time during the season. And once he does that, you'll see. The Bears are going to be the their Bears are going to be more like that eleven and sixteen that um, you know they can be, and that eleven and six possibly will definitely get them into the playoffs. And uh, who knows, they can even win that division. So that's what I'm saying about the Bears. And we already know with no Green Bay, no Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, it's a wide open field. And if I got to make a choice, I'm going to give it to Chi Town. All right. You've heard the defense, but you know this is flipping, where we flip the the script and defend the opposing view. The Bears have to show they have a quarterback. Otherwise, Vikings win the division hands down. You know, know, First Lady, uh, uh, being a Bears fan, you know, hope springs eternal. But being a Bears fan is not the same as being a Dallas Cowboys fan. You know? We do not have it every season that they're going to do anything, and we'd be glad when they get on a roll. See, Dallas fans, they automate, well, they made this adjustment. On to the Super Bowl. Bear fans know better. Now, first off, the, uh, the coach and the GM, you know what? Uh, 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 part of that sale of the Bears will be, be getting rid of them. Because they are going to mess this up. They are going to, they have an opportunity to uh, take the division, you know, while the division is down, Detroit is down. Like I said, the the, the Vikings are mediocre. Uh, Green Bay, uh, whoever's starting that quarterback ain't Aaron Rodgers. 
They got everything, and what will happen is, is that the Bears will mess around and start the winning quarterback too late, too late in the season for him to progress enough for them to make it to the playoffs. They was because first off is and why it's too late is because they will do some tomfoolery called start Andy Dalton at the beginning of the season. They will do that when it's like, dude, uh, let Justin get out there because this boy got time. He got that Deshaun Watson talent, and he ain't been trying to slap massage therapists around with his penis. So, you know, he got a much better <laughs> upside. And, and you know, uh, uh, he has played it. You know, playing at Ohio State, cold weather is your back, is your name. Well, oh, is it? So a lot of games that other quarterbacks struggle in, uh, hey, you know, I didn't play at Ohio State all these years. That's like, you know, snow, ice, cold, wind, you know, uh, he know how to win them games. But they will make the mistake of starting Andy Dalton. And by the time that Justin comes in, it, 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 it'll be a lot, but it'll be too late. First lady, defend. Well, I mean, let's face it. We're talking about the Bears. And they just get in their way when it comes to the management of the Bears. Now, every year they always have a controversy when it comes to the quarterback. I mean, <laughs> it's always been a year after year. We had it last year. You had Mitch Trubisky going against um, Foles. Foles. What's his name? Um, whatever his name was. The, 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 the guy that won the championship for the um, Eagles. Nick Foles. Nick Foles. So it's it's always been a problem with the Bears when it comes to making decisions of who's going to start their quarterback. So that's number one. They're off the off the start of the, off that situation. It's always going to be a problem because then again, you you drain the team, and the team's going to have to answer to who's going to be the starting quarterback. Should should Justin Fields get his start? Is it, you know they already said that basically kind of said that uh, Andy Dalton was going to be starting. And the question is, well, when will Justin Fields get his start? So you're going to have this back-to-back-to-back. And let's face it, the Bears, again, they got a tough record. Their their record is really – schedule is extremely tough. You know, it's funny, though. You know, I don't know why their schedule is tough. And some other schedules are not. But the Bears, I don't know. They ended up with a very tough schedule. Now, I look at the – the Minnesota Vikings. This is a team. I really think they need to start doing something because uh, they uh, gave Cousins all that money, and what has he done? He hasn't done too much. You know, Diggs left them and basically left them with not a great offensive um, uh, wide receiver core. But you know, but they went on a spending spree during the off season. What they did, I mean, their offense is always going to turn around, even though they don't have um, um, digs anymore. But you know, Cousins has definitely shown that he is a reputable quarterback. I don't think he's spectacular, but he'll get the job done. So they kind of really spent their money where they needed to spend their money on. And that was on their defense. They went on a Spending spree during the off season. It was very successful. So they improved their defense tremendously, the Vikings. And um, also, they are reto- they, they kind of um, started drafting a little bit better than they, they've done in the past. So that they had a great draft. So I think they, what they have, they have more depth, depth than, the, um, depth than the, um, the Chicago Bears do. And I really think that the Vikings will definitely win this division because of the fact that the Bears, they always get in their way. They, the, the, the management of the Bears, something's going to go wrong. Like you said, they, they almost do remind you of the Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> so something always gets in the way with the Bears. They just cannot put all facets together to, to win. 
whether it's the offense. Now, we already know they got a great defense, but when your offense is not good, your defense becomes weakened by the fact that the offense is not good because they're always on the field. So that really just unfortunately makes their defense not that great because they just so tired and worn out. So, yeah, I just think right now when you look at these two teams, I just think the Vikings are definitely more superior than the Chicago Bears. All right, First Lady, uh, that was the breakdown on Flip It. Uh, But First Lady, please, please, please. Take us to break. Okay, yeah, the Bears break down. Stay tuned up next to Funnies and our favorite underwater friend on Flip It Part 2. It is. Welcome back. You are still listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. It's time for the funny spit face. Over to you. All right. Okay. Okay. And, um, you know, sometimes these criminals make me wonder. Goldilocks burglar caught napping. A retired couple from Lincolnshire returned home from a holiday to discover a burglar fast asleep in their bed. Martin Holtby and Pat Dyson were amazed to find the intruder. Luskas Chernovsky had done their dishes, washed his underwear, and even bought some groceries. They picked the wrong spot. Let's see. Mr. Dyson said their house wasn't too tidy when they went away, but Chernovsky, who is originally from Poland but moved to Leeds, had kindly tidied up. He did burn an old saucepan, but that happened. She added, Chinowski then 28, admitted burglary and was given a two-year conditional discharge in order to pay uh, 200 pounds for the cost. Mm-mm-mm. My man, <laughs> he's sleeping, <laughs> big fix the dinner, the box of tidy it up to pay <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. uh-uh-uh. Well, guys are dying of water splashes everywhere. It must be time for our favorite underwater friend. It's time for Flip It First Lady over to you. NFL training camps open in a few weeks, and we are wondering about the upcoming season. Who has a better chance of making it back to the Super Bowl, Tampa Bay or Kansas City? All right, panel defend. Tampa Bay, without a doubt, Spitface defend. Tom Brady. <laughs> uh, uh, there was a report he played last year with a uh, a, a injury that would have sidelined most quarterbacks, but because he's a pocket passer and they could protect him some, he was able to play and mess around and win the Super Bowl. Now, you know, sometimes you go, look, we, does he need anything else for his legend to grow? You know, <laughs> you know I, I'm, I'm waiting for the movie, First Lady. <laughs> you know, I, I'm waiting for the movie because, my God, you know, you, you, know, you, know, you know how in every movie they have to kind of romanticize, the, you know, make it, you know, the, all that. The, you, the, please don't give get, don't get the writers any more stuff because it will be syrupy sweet by the time it's all over. We we just can't take that. But I go Tampa Bay without a doubt. They won the Super Bowl, and with a team that had not played together a whole season. You know, <laughs> you know, and you, you know, and you and you think about that now. Uh, I, I could get everybody to go, hey, KC, they done retooled, they done, up, they done upgraded that line. They had a couple of players that, you know, had opted out due to COVID, coming back, you know, that's the woo, they it. You know, and I, I'm with you, Kansas City going to be right there. But I'm going, wait, almost the majority of the Kansas City players have been playing together for a few years now. They won a Super Bowl together. The Tampa Bay team... This is their second season together. This is just the second season together, and they made some improvements too. 
So uh, uh, I know on the KC side, where hey, look, we got you know that situation in Tampa Bay uh, where uh, them Buccaneers was squatting, <laughs> was squatting my homies <laughs> that that we gonna protect them better. Got it, got it. Yeah, Tampa Bay, without a doubt. Okay, all right, Tampa Bay, without a doubt. Yeah, it certainly won't be easy, you know, for a team to win back-to-back. It's always something going wrong when a team doesn't win back-to-back. And uh, But when you look at the um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, what they did remarkably, they re-signed all of their pending free agents. Basically what they did, they brought back their entire championship team from the you know from last year, and that's very difficult. That usually doesn't happen in the NFL, but they were able to find the monies and find the means. They brought back everybody. They brought back Chris Godwin. I think they, if I'm not mistaken, I think they franchise tag him. They brought back Indomica Sue, Rob Konkowski, Leonard Fournette, Antonio Brown, Brown, Ryan Subcup. Sup Cup, I think I'm pronouncing it right, and they they it was it was they had like nine people that they had free agents they had to resign and they resigned every single one of them. So that's the number re- one reason. Basically, it's the same team as last year. Now another um, good thing for the um, Bucks that they have a lot of depth on their front line and their offensive line and their defensive line. They have backups just in case people get hurt. If you remember, that was Kansas City problem. When their offensive line got hurt, people couldn't come in. It was a farce. I mean, it was ridiculous what happened to KC. That's the reason why poor um, um, Mahomes was running backwards. You know, I forgot how many yards they calculated that he ran backwards running for his life. But, see, that's not going to happen with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they – have good depth with their defensive line and offensive line. And like you said, Spitface, they still have Tom Brady. They have Tom Brady and his leadership. That's the best quarterback when it comes to leading a team. You get Tom Brady, for some reason, that teammates and his, they will follow him. So he is strong with that. And then the other thing that is crazy as it may seem the Bucks have an easy schedule. I don't really understand how they got an easy schedule because I thought if you were the Super Bowl, you you supposed to get a hard schedule. I forgot how the the NFL will, you know, how they do their schedule. But according to DraftKings, the Bucks and Buccaneers have one of the easiest schedules this season. So you got an easy schedule, and you got your same team coming back. And like you said, Spitface, they're 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 playing. Um, more this this is the first time that they be playing together for a long time because they played together all last season, but now they really solidify their chemistry. I mean, I don't see any reason why the Bucks um, shouldn't lose. To be honest with you, I mean, they're gonna run it back. They're gonna run it back. So they will be the back to back Super Bowl champions. But this is flip it. And this is where we defend the opposing point of view. Kansas City shored up their offensive line. They have the better shot. Spit face defend. You know, you know, I, you know, um, you know well, yeah, I, I'm looking at that, that Super Bowl and a couple of KC games where, you know, Patrick Mahomey was running around like he was Pac-Man. <laughs> he was just running. And, um, uh, Kansas City, uh, you know, they paying him a billion dollars. Now, uh, Andy Reid is not crazy, and he's the GM. And he knew that, you know what, uh, uh, Patrick can uh, get hurt. And I don't mean like in- seriously injured, but you can, you can have a sore ankle that you can play on, but that don't mean that you're going to be 100%. And you need the line to be able to step up to give you where, where you didn't need that that extra second and a half. You need it this week so that you can you know get past that injury and move on. 
And they couldn't do that because they didn't have – they had a couple of players who was out because of COVID, you know, who uh, they elected out. And, and they so now they're back. And then they went out and, and got – and improved that offensive line so that he's not, you know, running around like a chicken with his head cut off in the backfield. Now, uh, so they have – improve they will be there they will be because they steal the score machine and they got a good defense so uh and we may see and they did some uh, improvements on d now uh tampa bay uh there's an old saying you live by the sword and you go down by the sword and this is the case of Tom Brady, he's the sword. Now, so far, he has defied Father Time. He has kicked Father Time in the butt. But did he? As the report said, he spent most of last year injured. I don't know how it didn't get reported. I think somebody down at Tampa Bay done learned some of them uh, New England Patriot tricks. <laughs> But there is a, you know, uh, with, with all this talent and with all they have on that team, it only takes a little bit less, just a little bit. And uh, Tom Brady will have visions of playing the New York Giants with time running out, and all he needs is that defense to do, to hold on to 30 seconds. So I go, Kansas City got the better shot. All right. Well, you know what, Spitzface? <laughs> I think Kansas City has the better shot because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who knows with the fact that they hid Tom Brady's injury? I mean, you're supposed to report injuries every week on the injury report. Now, if he was that severely injured, it should have been reported, and it wasn't. So I look to them being penalized by the NFL for that. So first of all, they're going to get their whole season off to a bad to to a bad uh, start because of the fact I think the, um, the Godfather Goodell is going to come down on them because that's something you got to report. So anyway, that's number one. Um, number two, um, like you said, with the injury. I believe Father Time will finally catch up to Tom Brady. I mean, I know Max Kellerman on ESPN's first take, he had predicted the cliff like about four years ago. (laughs) He said Tom Brady was going to fall off the cliff. He hasn't fallen off the cliff yet. But I think this season we are not going to see the same Tom Brady that we saw last season, especially with him coming off of the injury. But, I mean, let's look at the Kansas City um, Chiefs. They got gut punch in the Super Bowl last year. So you expect this team to come out with a lot of fire and desire. I mean, they're going to do what they needed to do. Mahomes was injured himself, but they did report that he was injured. They said he had a foot problem. So I believe he's going to do much better this year because of that foot problem when they get into the playoffs. And, you know, what can we say? They still have their dangerous weapons. They still got Travis Kelsey. They still got Tyreek Hill. They have Hardman. They have Clyde Edwards Hilaire. So they, and also, they still got the combo team of Andy Reid and Eric Benemy because he did, Eric Benemy didn't go anywhere. So we still got that potent chief offense that will always prevail over any team's defense with the exception of last year. But, again, like I said, we said last year they didn't have that offensive line because they didn't have backups. So, like you said, Spitface, they shored up their offensive line. So, if they shored up their offensive line, what can go wrong for the Kansas City Chiefs? You know, they are the premium team in the league. Everybody's offense is trying to be like the Kansas City Chiefs. So, again, and we know their defense wasn't that bad either. I mean, with all the problems they had uh, last season with the offense, as far as the offensive line, I mean, they held their own in the um, on the defense part, but they were on the field for most of the part of the Super Bowl. So now that they got a healthy offensive line and the 
Um, Mahomes is back. They still got the weapons. Their defense is going to be better, too. So, I mean, I look for I actually, to be honest with you, I look for it to be a back-to-back um, uh, back-to-back Super Bowl um, replay again. It's going to be the Kansas City Chiefs against Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, and this time around, Kansas City will win, and they'll be victorious. All right, Spitface, please take us to break. All right, all right. And, 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 and First Lady, uh, you heard it here. Andy Reid is grooming Eric to be his heir to the Kansas City dynasty. Mm-hmm. Take care of your homie. <laughs> on the right. other side, nobody of the place, else is hiring him. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Look, let me go. I, I, you know, hey, but and watch for for Andy to go to the front office as the GM or or as the team president. Okay. All right. You know, hey, sometimes you promote from within. On the other side of the break, we have another performance from eighteen carat Reggie or shout out part two. Please stay tuned. You are listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. It's time for a shout out part two the picks and the finale. The music flows from around the globe to get a shout out from the crew. Spitface, over to you. All right, First Lady. We was moving and grooving earlier. Now we have another performance from 18 Karat Reggae DJ. Let's hear Come and Go. You know, I remember, what was that cameo back and forth? So this is Come and Go. All right, just a <laughs> second. Yeah, remember Back and Forth? Cam- yeah, I, I think remember I was Back and Forth. Cam- cam- cameo, cam- cam- you know. But yeah. uh, this is Come and Go. Let's check it out. <laughs> Must accomplish over yonder card the souls are win for Jaja is the righteous things I know. Greater than greater come and go. Remember, said the cup must overflow. The mission must accomplish over yonder card the souls are win for Jaja is the righteous things I know. Now for them, go pick up them chests and set them round the place. Let them know so we not chase and when they come to chase. I go out tell the entertainers them to cooperate. Cause it's a mission and we fail if we don't up any train. Well, I'm no jockey with no whip and fly to no gate. In this the language I will never use upon a stage. Because the youngsters them, the boat and come around the range. And them little thing nowadays we call the Greater than greater, come and go. Remember, say the cup must overflow. The mission must accomplish over yonder car. The souls are win for Jaja is the righteous things I know. Greater than greater, come and go. Remember, say the cup must overflow. The mission must accomplish over yonder car. The souls are win for Jaja is the righteous things I know. Fulfillment shall reveal the place to live, the place to love, the place to get real better. Who not yet make counsel in a go feel? No make Satan wrap your own his hands like he's a deal. This advantage you want to stop, we no one no longer. Let us unite, shine hands and get stronger. Stop killing up for our poor black brother. Cause Africa is the land of our mother and our father. Greater than greater, come and go. Remember, say the cup must overflow. The mission must accomplish over yonder car. The souls are win for Jaja is the righteous things I know. Greater than greater, come and go. Remember, say the cup must overflow. The mission must accomplish over yonder car. The souls are win for Jaja is the righteous things I know. Don't be foolish, I'm a wise. I know I've no sympathizer when the derby is on. Up when you scare somebody, but 
out of the baby face, man, must need to get set out, who say? Man, I'm a dead cause them take youngsters simple and the emblem can't face never wrinkle. Greater than greater, come and go. Remember, say the cup must overflow. The mission must accomplish over yonder cause the souls are win for Jaja is the righteous things I know. Greater than greater, come and go. Remember, say the cup must overflow. The mission must accomplish over yonder cause the souls are win for Jaja is the righteous things I know. <laughs> that was come and go. Is to try to get a shot out of you, but first lady, what's the verdict? Oh, I'm gonna shout it out. Um, I understood the hook when they do come and go, righteous mind, all the no, something like that. I the rest of the song I couldn't understand what he was saying because I just couldn't get the patois. But uh, but it sounded good, and it, you know <laughs> it is it, it, traditional reggae music. It, it probably was a, 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 a political statement song to me. Um, I may be wrong, but it, it sounded like there was some politics. You know, a lot of sometimes, a lot of reggae music, you know, it has a message, and a political message, believe it or not, sometimes. Sometimes. But this one, that that's how it sounded to me. But it was good, and I'm definitely shouting it out. I, I, I'm shouting it out, too, First Lady. I enjoyed the track hat. Head, head, I felt the vibe. I felt the vibe. Now that that this is the end of shout out. If you like what you heard from eighteen carat reggae, check them out at eighteen carat reggae dot com and old grumpy radio. If you'd like to be heard or have any comments, please send your emails and tracks to content at old grumpy radio dot com. First lady, back to you. Who will win the hardwood crown? All right, let's go. We had a major change in our standings. Let's go to last week. All right, Spitface, uh, wasn't a great week for you, but you still ended up in the positive side. You had $5 million. Dizzy Mac ended up with $15 million. Dizzy Mac finally got out the red. He's back into the black. And I ended up with every single question right. I had $25 million. Mm. So let's look at the grand total mm, as of mm. this week. All right, I over, you know, I'm in the league now, Spitface. I have 45.95 million points. Spitface has 34.15 million points. And like I said, Dizzy Mac is back in the black. He has 1.5 million points. So I let's get to the current picks, and I see the producers up the ante. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, so let's get started. Maximum ten million dollar bets, ten million points bets. All right, Suns win series in seven. Woo, woo, woo! This is a tough one, very tough. <laughs> All right, I am going to say no. I'm going to say no. I mean, I was rocking with the Suns, but they blew their chance in my eyes. I just don't see the Bucks giving this series back to them. They're going to put them away in six games. So I'm going to say no. And I'm going to bet. Mm. I'm going to go $10 million. All right, you're going 10. Okay, you're rolling with the dice. I'm going with them Suns, and I'm going to put $5 million on the Suns. The Suns will win series in seven, okay? 
So you say yes, and you have five, five mega ones. Okay. Giannis, Giannis, Giannis will win, will be the MVP of the finals. Um, all right. I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to do another 10 maximum million points. Spit face. I say no, and I'm putting up 10 mil. Okay. Because you're thinking the Suns are going to win the series. <laughs> All right. I'm thinking that he, that even if the Bucks win, he won't get the MVP. Are you serious? Well, who you think going to get the MVP? Someone else on the team is going to cruise. No, them if they I don't the think it. They, let me tell you something. They're not going to. They, Giannis first finals winning. He doesn't get the MVP. No, 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 no. Nope, nope, nope. Anyway, let's move on. CP3 will be the finals MVP. Spit face. No, ten million. Yeah, that's a that's an easy one because even if the Phoenix Suns win, it's going to be Booker. So, so I'm going to say no, ten million. Okay, Bucks lose in Milwaukee by fifteen points. Man, that's a no, no, ten million. Spit face. Five million that the Bucks do lose. In Milwaukee, by 15 points or more. Mm-hmm. All right. Obviously, you're not too sure about that. You wouldn't you would have done max. All right. If there is a game seven, that's a big if, Phoenix wins by one point. Nah, no. Usually, if it's a game seven, it's going to be more than one point. So I'm going to say no, 10 million. Spit face. I'm going with the 10 for the game seven. Huh? The game seven, I'm putting 10, and Phoenix will win by more than one point. Oh, but that's not what it says, though. Yeah, if there's a game seven, Phoenix wins by one point, I'm saying they're going to win by more than one point. So, oh, so, you so say that's no. a no. So okay, that's a okay, no. Okay, okay. And I'm putting okay. 10 million I you on said, it. Yes, that's why I was not trying. What are you talking about? Okay, so you're going to go 10 max. Okay. I'm going to go 10 max. Okay. All right. So, hey, we'll see because this definitely will determine who will wear the hardwood crown. All right. Fit face, what is your top story to watch this week? How the NFL is going to manage making money off of legalized gambling. How they going to get their cut? Oh, okay. How they going like like what the NBA did, huh? Yeah, well, you know you you know the Godfather got to do better. <laughs> <laughs> so you know he he lurking on the deal, but that that you know the the NFL is going to make money. Uh, these gam- gambling ain't going to make money, and the NFL ain't going to make no money. Right, right. Well, I'm going to continue with my story from last week because now we know there will be a game six. The question will be, will Maria Taylor be, be the host of the NBA, sh- um, their, their pregame show on Tuesday, um, on Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday for game six, because her contract expires the same day of game six. And there's been rumors that she's coming to a deal to move over to NBC to Mm. host their NFL Sunday night game, because I believe um, um, Mike Carrico is moving to replace Al... um, What's his, what's his last name? Oh, gosh, that's a shame. I can't remember his last name. The um, play, the play-by-play person on Sunday Al night. Al Michaels. Al Michaels, yes. It, supposedly he has retired. And Mike Tirico, you know, they had been grooming Mike Tirico to be the replacement. Mike. Mike. Money Mike. Mike, Mike Tirico. So, and he hosts the thing, hosts their pregame. So now they're looking for Maria Taylor. So that's going to be interesting to see what happens because maybe Rachel Nichols will finally get to be the host 
of the showdown. <laughs> okay, the NBA mm-hmm. showdown. But anyway, that's my top story for the week. All right, on July 5th, 2021, the World Health Organization, known as the WHO, held their Generation Equality Forum in Paris. The organization made extensive commitments to drive change for gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls in all their diversity. The WHO commitments focus on ending gender-based violence, advancing sexual and reproductive health and rights, and supporting health workers as well as feminist movements and leadership. This is a great thing. Another organization realized the need to empower women and and causes related to women. So we congratulate the well the World Health Organization for their major commitments. Shout out to the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center for our center our partners in empowering our women warriors fighting the business battle. Visit them at veteranwomensec.org. Veteranwomensec.org. We have upgraded our new website, broadspantiesandsports.com, to service you better. That's broadspantiesandsports.com. This is Cheryl Smith, the First Lady of Sports Talk and Spitface. You have been listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports.